Welcome. Let's do some counting practice. This will help you with homework one. So the question is, if we have some kind of a loop here, all right, um, we're going to ask how many times does some statement run? In this case, we're going to be counting the number of times that, that this innermost statement, sum plus plus, runs, right? So for instance, when we were done, we'd know the value of, of sum if we initialized it at zero. Okay? So it's, it's a nested loop, right? So some nested loop problems are actually pretty easy. Others are a little bit harder. So I want to talk about a, a technique that we can use to solve this. And it just simply, we're just going to set up a table here. Okay. So what I will do is set up a table and I'm going to work from the outside in with each of the variables. So I'm going to start off with i and then I'm going to have j and then I'm going to have a last column that is the count of the number of executions. All right, so let's look at this. Starting from the outside, I see that i starts at four. So my first value of i is right here, okay? Now while I'm thinking about it, uh, i is gonna continue on incrementing by one every time. So I know that the next time through this loop, it's gonna equal five, then six, then seven, and so on until it hits the end. Well, what's the largest valid value of i? Well, it, i has to be less than n, so the largest one is n minus one. All right, so for each of these, values of i, this inner loop is going to run here. All right, so let's go back to the to the i equals 4 case. All right, when i is 4, what does j do? Well, j starts at 0, and it's going to increment every time until it hits n. All right, so it's going to start at 0, and it's going to increment every time until it hits n. All right, well, that's that's fine. Okay, so it, it's, it's going to go through these, and if I were going to count these up, uh, it's easy if I start at 1. 1 through n is n of them, plus I have this 0, which is one more. So that inner loop executes n plus 1 times. Now, the next time through, now i equals 5. Well, what does j do? Well, it goes from 0 to n. Again, 0 all the way up to n, or another n plus 1 times. And I notice that there's no dependence in this inner loop on what the value of i is. In fact, it doesn't matter whether i is four, five, six, or anything, these guys right here, the inner loop is gonna execute the same number of times. This is actually one of the easy cases, right, as, as far as what we have here. Uh, so let's, let's go ahead and finish this up. So the last one here is zero to n, or n plus one of them. So then the only question that, that remains is, well, how many times does the outer loop work? Because what I want, I want the total number of times, so I need the sum of all these n plus ones. How many of them do I have? Well, I have between four and n minus one, so all those integers in between. And if you think about it, you know, if they started at one, I'd have one, two, three, four, all the way up to n minus one, so I'd have n minus one of them, but not these three, right? We skip those three, so it's n minus one minus those three of them, or a total of n minus four executions of the outer loop in which each run of the inner loop runs n plus one times. So if I run this guy, I get my, my total runtime is n minus four times n plus one. If we wanted to know that in terms of just an approximation, right? Uh, we often say that this would just be big O of, and the leading term here is n times n, or n squared, right? Uh, and you probably could have looked at that just by looking at it and saying, hey, it's a nested loop. Nested loops are generally n squared as long as there's not fun anything funky going on. So this actually isn't really the hard one, but sometimes sometimes you, you, gotta, you gotta think about what's going on in, in, the, uh, in these loops to know whether it really is n squared. And certainly if you want an exact answer, you have to go through some analysis like this just, you know, because they're going to be slightly different depending on where it starts and where it ends. You know, what if, if this were, you know, less than or equal to n, well, each one would be one more or there'd be one more iteration here. And, and what if this one didn't have it or, you know, if it started at one instead of zero. So there's a lot of little edge cases that, that you're concerned with. But, but for the most part, this is pretty easy because, you know, J did, oops, excuse me, uh, J did the same thing every time. All right, and that's that's our point here, right? This one really is, is pretty easy. Well, let's take a look at this the same problem, only what we're gonna do now is we're going to replace uh, this, this n right here. Oops, and again, 
uh, we're gonna replace it with an I, all right, an I. All right, well, how does, how does that change it? Well, let's start our same table here. So I, J, and I got a count here. All right, and let's go ahead and run this guy. So I, uh, I starts at four. Well, yeah, the outer loop didn't change. Four, five, six, all the way down to N minus one. No change there. Uh, let's look at J. Now J goes from zero up to less than or equal to I. So it starts at zero, incrementing every time. So one, two, three, where does it stop? It stops at the current value of I, which is four. So it comes up here up to and including four, which is the value of a, i. At that point, j equals i. The next time through it breaks out. Okay, so it's done here for a count of one, two, three, four, five times. All right, or again, counting one through four, plus one more for the zero. All right, well, that's fine. Uh, the next time through, right? Now, now notice here, j is gonna go from zero to i again. Zero, one, two, three, four, but now i is five, so it's gonna execute one more time. Total count here is gonna be six, all right? And I, I don't really have to work through this, this whole thing, uh, just really long enough to see the pattern. For six, it's gonna go from zero to six, and again, there are seven of those guys. And we should do the last step or two. Uh, if I look at this, the very last one is n minus one, so it's gonna go zero, all the way up to and including, okay, so less than or equal to the last one, which is n minus one. Okay, that's my value of i. How many of those are there? Well, from zero to n minus one, hmm. So from one to n minus one is clearly n minus one of them, plus one more for zero, which is gonna give me a total of n. All right, so here are all my counts of each execution of i. I want the total. All right, and this is not so easy as just multiplying, uh, but we can realize that, that all it is is just a summation where i goes, let's see, so we're starting at five and ending at n of i, all right? And we know formulas for that. Actually, uh, the formula says start at one, so I can rewrite this guy here as the sum from one to n minus the sum from one to four. Okay, again, this since I start at five, it's everything except for the first four. And then each one of the, these guys has a closed form solution, right? So uh, I don't wanna leave a summation in my answer. I want it to be closed form, which means use the formula, okay, in terms of n. And we know that that formula is n times n plus one over two minus, and then the next one here is going to be uh, four times four plus one over two, or I just know one plus two plus three plus four is equal to 10. And I can simplify that however I want, okay? Now, if I look at this, this is approximately equal to one half n squared. So about half the number of iterations as we had in, in our original problem. Uh, and big O certainly is also gonna be n squared, right? Again, nested loops one inside the other um, tend to be n squared as long as, you know, as long as nothing funky happens. All right, let's take a look at a second example. So for this one, um, I just have a single loop, all right? I goes from one to n, uh, so just like the other one, except that this time i is not incrementing, we're multiplying by two every time. All right, now this one, I don't really need a full table on. Uh, I just realized that, that for this, that I have, well, I guess what, what is i doing, right? So, uh, so i, all right, is going one, two, it's doubling every time, so one times two, times two, times two, and so on until I get to n, all right? So if I wanna know what is the count of those, right? so how many times can I double a number before I get to the n? I could think about that as two raised to some power that gives me n, and if I were to solve that, the way that I, if the way that I solve for the exponent is to take log base two of each side, right? So log base two of two to the i equals log base two of, of n. And log base two of two to anything, remember log means look for the exponent. So two raised to what power gives me two to the i? Well, i is equal to log base two to the n. So this power, this, this thing that I'm looking for, how many times do I double until I reach n is just log base two of n, okay? Now we have to be careful with this because uh, it's very, very easy to make off by one errors here. 
So what I want to do is check some of these things, right? So my, my guess answer right now is log base two of n. And I pretty much know that, that that's going to be the big O as well. But let's let's go for exact first, right? So let's try some numbers. Uh, let's try a number that, that starts off, we'll start with a power of two. Because we're doubling every time, power of twos are going to work out beautifully. So let's pick something like n equals, I don't know, let's say eight. That's a nice small power of two that I can deal with, all right? If n equals eight, then i is going to go one, two, four, and it was less than or equal to n. So the eight is okay here, right? And we, if we see that, we just count them up here, one, two, three, four, that that's four times. Well, the log base two of eight, two raised to what power gives me eight, is certainly not four, it's only three, right? So it looks like the number of times that it executes is actually one bigger than the log. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a plus one here to my answer, okay? Uh, and that's great. In, in this case, n equals eight, it gives me an exact answer. And if n were a power of two, I'd be done. Except that n isn't always a power of two, so we're gonna need to round this because the number of executions must be an integer, but if n isn't a power of two, then log base two is gonna give me a fraction. So let's, let's check to see how we'd round it. So what I'm gonna do is start with something a little bit bigger, n equals nine. And in this case, log base two of nine is a little bit bigger than three. I don't know, 3.1 or something. It's a two raised to something that's a little bit bigger than three, but certainly smaller than four. Uh, so let's see, what do we get in this case? So, so if n equals nine, i is gonna be one, two, and it's gonna keep doubling as long as it's less than or equal to nine. While well, it goes up to eight, if it doubles again at 16, which isn't less than or equal to nine, so we're done. And once again, we get four times. So let's check our formula here. So if I were to take log base two of nine and then add one, we said is our formula. So that'd be 3.1 plus one, 4.1, but it needs to give me a four. So what I wanna do is I wanna round it down. So take the floor of this guy. So I'm gonna propose that for our answer, we actually take the floor of log base two of n plus one, okay? Uh, that looks good, all right? What I usually do is just check on the other side of the of the power of two, so maybe something a little bit smaller than eight. Again, just to make sure that it, that it works here, and it's a good kind of sanity check. So if n equals seven, you tell me what happens with i. What's it gonna do? Okay, you got it. So one, two, four, but you know it can't be eight this time because it can only be less than, um, uh, less than or equal to seven, right? So this time we get three, right? Well, does our formula give us three when n equals seven? Well, let's check this out here. What's what's log base two of seven, all right? So let's see, we'll, we'll plug it in here. So log base two of seven. So if log base two of eight is three, two to something slightly smaller than three, so maybe 2.9 or something like that, uh, plus one. So we get 3.9. And when we round this guy down, right, remember floor means always round down no matter what, we get a three, all right? And that's what we were looking for, all right? So that matches up. So this formula seems to work. So uh, hope that helps you as you're thinking about, you know, whether you use a floor or a ceiling or, you know, whether you need a plus one or not. Honestly, the easiest way is just to check some small examples for N, something that's a power of two, and then things that are close to a power of two to get the rounding right. All right, what's the big O? Well, big O ignores all this kind of, you know, this other stuff here, doesn't worry so much about it and says, what's the most important term? It's that log base two of N, all right? And again, I hope this is helpful for you as you do your homework, all right? See you later. Mm -hmm.